Hey MHDOX, I'm really glad you asked this because currently we are in the middle of a how to make an action RPG series and we are going to need to learn how to use state machines for the next episodes where we're adding bosses and NPCs to the game. So let's get started with the video and learn what a state machine is in Godot. But before we get started, I just want to ask if you go down there and hit that subscribe button so more inspiring game developers can learn to make their own Godot games as well. But let's get started and waste no more time and learn what a state machine is. So what is a state machine? Well, a state machine is a mathematical model of com- Whoa, 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 that seems complicated. So in simple terms, a state machine just keeps track of an active state and it handles the transitions in between each state. So how do you use it in Godot, you ask? You transition through different states and I found this image that shows everything perfectly. Standing is the main state, but if you press the down key, then you duck. And when you're a duck, you can't jump or dive, you can only transition into the standing state. When you're ducking, then to stand up, you release the down key. And when you stand, you can't dive. But if you click the jump button and are in the jump state, then you can click the dive button and dive and it won't cause you to duck, even though the duck and dive key are the same exact key because you're in the diving state. Hope you understand that. If not, please let me know in the comments. But I mean, you can kind of see this image that is on screen now. That is a almost perfect example of what, like a simple simple state machine so how do we make one well it's pretty easy so we're gonna make a brand new uh game we're gonna go over here add a 2d scene we can name this scene the world we can save this scene then we can go up here to the top we can make a brand new 2d scene and we can name this an npc because most of the time npcs use a state machine so they can control movement on their own right and in the npc we'll add a sprite and for this sprite, we can just use this icon. We'll make the icon a little black dot. We can go to the NPC and we can add a timer. That, that is not a timer at all, but we can go to the NPC and add a timer just like that. And we want this timer to be on auto start. So as soon as the game starts, we have a timer that works, right? Now we go up to the NPC and we can create a new script and all this in here we can delete or actually i think we'll need the ready function in a minute but we can always make it go back so brand new script under the npc so let's build a state machine in here and we're going to get started with the different states so we're going to use a in enum which is like a it's a list of variables that count kind of uh, i'll explain it here in just a second more but we'll add our different states in here so like we have an idle state and then we also want a state where we choose a new direction and we also want our move state right so sometimes our npc is going to be standing there sometimes it's going to be going in a new direction and sometimes it's going to be moving right so these are our three states it's basically just a list of variables it'll go like from this one to this one to this one in order or actually it's not going to go in order but it will just pick around it's kind of like a list now we need some different variables, like the basic movement ones like speed, which is gonna be a constant. We also need a variable and we're gonna name this the current state, because this is gonna be the current state and we'll just start off on idle. And we also need direction, which is gonna be equal to a vector, vector two dot right. Boom. So. Those are all the variables we need. Now we're going to go and add a function processor and I'm going to try and like write out all the code then I'm going to go through and explain what everything does here in just a second. But under our physics process function or not physics, just a process function Delta under this, we're going to want to do a command called match. Now match is like, it's, it's kind of like, a switch function like most other languages have it called switched but Godot just calls it match but it's kind of like just a switch function and kind of what it does so well it, I mean it's I don't really know how to explain but like current state let me show you so current state and then all our current state is idle right but we want the current state the current state can be equal to any one of these, right? And we'll equal it to this here in a minute when we make another function that chooses them. But like current state right now is equal to idle, which is like the first one. So it's equal to idle. So if current state's equal to idle, 
then we want it to be able to do what's in here, right? Or switch to these states, whatever states that we put in here in just a second. If the state is equal to new direction, then we want it to be equal to these states, right? And if the state is on move already, then we want it to be equal to these states. But it's all past right now, but we're gonna go through and we're gonna add in these in a minute. So let's make some functions for the little, so we can replace the past. So our move function, which is gonna probably be the simplest one, we'll just do move delta. And under here, we can just do position plus equals direction times speed times delta, right? And that is all for movement. I'm gonna go through all this again, by the way, and kind of explain each and every little part here in just a second once we finish the entire script. But we also have a choose function, which is gonna go through and it's, it's gonna, whatever we input. So we'll input our array. That will be what we input depending on it. Like, so sometimes we'll input numbers like 0.5, 1, 1 1.5 as like the time, like how long in between we swap functions or swap state states. We'll also put in these into here and it will choose one of these randomly. And we're going to do this by going array. So whatever we input and then just shuffle and then we'll just return the very, very first, uh, first item in the list after it gets shuffled, which will be the front item, just like that. And that's, that's kind of what it is. It just picks values randomly, whatever we input in, right? So if we, we input an array that has one, two, and three in it, then it's going to pick a random one. If it shuffles it and it says three, one, two, then it's going to pick three because three is in the front, right? That's kind of how that works. So now we can go up here to the direction and we can do direction equals choose because this is going to be the function that we just made. And then we can go vector two dot right. And then we can copy and paste this. Copy, paste, paste, paste. And then here we need up. We need all the directions left and down. So now we go to the move function and then we can just do move and then delta. That is all the functions. So technically the player would work. It would work, but we have a timer over here, which the timer is going to like, it's going to make it look more randomized because it's going to stuff's going to be happening at different times, right? So. The way we're going to do this is we're going to go over to our timer, click node, click timeout and to our NPC script connect. Now we're going to get a brand new function down here. And what we can do is we can get our timer and then we can do, we can set the wait time to our choose function, which is up here, right? We just made that and our choose function. We want it to, pick through these values, right? So we'll do half a second, we'll do a full second and we'll do one and a half seconds. And then we'll also do like two seconds, right? So now whenever we, uh, every time the timer times out, it's gonna choose a brand new wait time. So it will go through, it will grab all these numbers, put it into this array. It will shuffle the array. It will pick whatever number of these is in the front. So it could be two the first time then the wait time of the timer is going to be two. So once that two seconds goes off, then it's going to go through all this again. So then the next time it could be 0.5. So then once the timer goes off in 0.5 seconds, it will keep going through that. So each time it's something different, but every time the timer times out, we want to choose a brand new state, right? So we'll do current state is equal to the choose function, right? So then we'll input all these different, uh, all our different states that we have new direction and then move those are all of our states we'll save the npc scene and this is pretty much exactly what we need but it's going to play the exact same thing over and over right so 
if we play the game once and it's gonna move right and down, right? It's gonna do that. I, I don't know if it's gonna do that, but it will keep doing whatever it does the first time over and over until we add a randomizing. But let me show you what it what it's gonna do. So if we save, we can go to our world, we can instance our NPC scene, we can play in our world, and you'll see. So it moves right, it moves up. You can't really see it, so let's, let's move it down. But you'll see here, it should move right again, the first move, and it should move up again. Right, see, so it's gonna keep doing the exact same thing over and over and over, right? So it's gonna make, it made like a, it went right up, sideways, and down. The last time, that's what it did. And we gotta fix that problem. But you see, it's making it like decisions on its own. But if we go over here, and then we can go under these, we can go function, uh, ready and then this is a go dot function which is called randomize now if we save this and then we go play in the world you'll see it's going to not do that same thing again it's going to go a different way yeah see now it goes down first right and it's going to just move around the screen do a bunch of different stuff you can change up all the different like the time it waits and all that different stuff but you see so that time it went down first if we go again, it shouldn't go down first again, or it might, just depending on what it picks. It did, so if we keep playing it, it shouldn't go down again, though. Yeah, yeah, see, so normally it would uh, do the exact same thing over and over, but now it's completely different every single time you play the game. We go right, so that was like a two second wait time, so it went forever. Now we go down, right, and it just keeps going through and going through. But that is kind of like, a very very simple state machine in Godot so I hope it did help but thank you guys so so much for watching I really do hope you learned something and I hope it helped you on your Godot journey but if you're having a problem understanding please let me know in the comments and I'll be glad to help you out this is gonna be very important for our action RPG series and if you are not following this series I recommend you go and follow this series because it is a pretty inf informational series. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.